What's going on everybody? Uh, this is a video of my new PFSense router that I just got in built in building and a tale of frustration that goes along with it. Uh, for anybody who's built a lot of computers, um, you know how you can have, you know, hundreds or a hundred or plus and everything goes smooth, you don't really ever have any major issues. And every once in a while you get that computer that just hates you and doesn't want to be built that was this machine so uh, <coughs> excuse me uh, so basically what we have here is I've got a small ITX case this is the Antec ISC 300-150 uh, uh, comes with a 150 watt power supply it's actually not a bad little machine or at least the case isn't and that wasn't uh, at all any of the problem. If I can get this apart one handed here. There we go. So, case slides apart pretty easily. It's not too bad. Uh, one handed, it's a little trickier. But this is the machine in the end. So, we got the, the case obviously. There's this little bracket here um, that holds your drives. This will fit a couple of two and a half inch drives. Um, a thin, excuse me, a thin CD can be actually placed underneath of here, which loads in behind this front panel up here. Uh, below all of this is the power supply. Uh, for the motherboard, can't, you know, there's not really a good angle of it in here, but we actually have a ASRock server grade motherboard. Uh, it's got IPMI functionality, which is kind of nice, dual gigabit, uh, Intel mix. Um, it's a C226 chipset. Uh, the only reason I got that is I found it for a pretty good deal on Newegg, so I got that versus one of the lower end ones. It was actually cheaper, so I figured why not. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, replace the cooler and the fan that was in here stock. It comes with a uh, the three speed Antec fans, the tri cools, I believe they're called. Uh, took that out. There's also a blank that was on this side that I removed that just covers up this hole. Put in a couple of uh, high airflow, the A series uh, Noctua fans. Got a low profile 37 millimeter Noctua cooler. I don't recall the full name of it off the top of my head. It's basically the smallest thing that they've got. Um, the chip that's in here is just a little uh, Celeron chip. No, nothing too crazy. It's like 53 or 54 watt chip. <clears throat> um, so you don't really need a whole heck of a lot of cooling for it. I don't imagine it'll ever be under any kind of real heavy load anyway. Uh, for additional networking connectivity, I actually picked this up off of eBay. This is a Intel Pro 1000 gigabit uh, NIC. <clears throat> and it's also quad port. And here's the rest of the I.O. too. So once this is all hooked up, uh, really all of these ports will be full, filled up. We'll have the uh, IPMI hooked up. We'll have probably our main LAN and our WAN over here. Two of these will be hooked up to my server, <clears throat> my file server over LACP. Another one will be for LAN number two. And this one up here is actually going to be Wi-Fi or, you know, one of these will be the Wi-Fi. I haven't got the exact order figured out yet. <clears throat> Um, so the actual physical build itself wasn't a problem. Oh yeah, this is an Intel uh, drive here, obviously. Uh, 535, I believe, 240 gig. So the build itself wasn't so much a problem. It physically, it went together just fine. It's a very easy case to work in, despite being really small. The only thing I kind of had an issue with is this power cable isn't very long. So for these server-style motherboards where they've got sometimes the power in kind of a funky place with a 24 pin, that was kind of a wonky deal. But other than that, the rest of it went together really good uh, problems didn't start cropping up until we started to boot it for the first time <clears throat> so upon the first boot uh, it wouldn't fire up at all I would just get this uh, screen where I where it would show that it was system initializing so the the, uh, the BMC base management computer on here for the IPMI and basically with this a baby computer that functions when the computer's turned off even so you can still log into it boot the machine up <clears throat> You get into your BIOS, all that kind of. If you're familiar with IPMI, you 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 know what's going on there. Um, but I got to the point where it would initialize the BMC from a cold start, <clears throat> where it didn't have any power at all or anything, 
And then it would start to boot up the rest of the system and it would hang on system initializing and not get any farther. Do a little bit of troubleshooting, find out, <clears throat> got a bad RAM stick. Okay. Swap out a RAM stick out of another computer, put it in here. <clears throat> Fires right up. We can get into BIOS now. All right, we're rocking and rolling. So at this point, I try hooking up the IPMI to it. Um, I've actually got a little switch over here that connects to the rest of my network. That's actually where LAN 2 comes from. Uh, I got another switch that hooks up to other parts of the network. <clears throat> so I hook it up, try to get it going, and I can log in through the web interface for IPMI, but anytime I try to use console redirect to actually basically run the computer from, from my other machine, it won't work. It won't download the uh, the JavaScript. Now I could get into the ser the serial console over web, but I couldn't get into just the regular the regular console reader. I just wanted to use that for installing the OS and doing that kind of stuff. So after that became a bit of a failure, <clears throat> I started doing some digging, get a hold of Azrock to see if they've got any idea what's going on. It turns out I actually had a bad uh, EEPROM chip which is this little guy right here. So this is the old one. They actually sent me a new one. I don't know if I can get that to focus or not. Nope, not going to cooperate. Oh, anyway, little EEPROM chip, um, which actually goes in that little black box right down there by that heat sink. It's pretty easy to get it out. It just flips apart like a little clamshell on the top and very carefully remove one, stick the other one in. Um, but it basically just wasn't working. So they sent me a new one. I put it in and now I can start getting a little farther into the situation, but we're still having issues. Um, it turns out there's something browser related that was also a problem. Um, tried Chrome, tried Firefox, had no luck there. Eventually I got around to uninstalling Firefox and uninstalling Chrome, reinstalling both and Chrome still won't work, but Firefox now works, so I can use Firefox to get into here, so it, you know, that's something. So I got the console working, and everything's hunky-dory. Uh, I go to install PFSense, and I try doing it over virtual media, over IPMI. First doing virtual US, uh, virtual CD. So I load the ISO in, and it says it can't do it. Okay. Go back to the PFSense website, <clears throat> re-download from a different mirror, thinking maybe I just somehow got a corrupted, uh, corrupted installer. ISO. Try it again. Nope, ain't happening. So it's like, okay, well, let's back out and try this again. Now this is was partially partially my fault here. What happened was, is I needed to use this Rufus program to convert their downloaded version of an ISO into an actual working ISO. So. Switched it over, had a quote unquote burn, tor pointed it towards the virtual media, still didn't work. It's like, okay. So then I did the same thing, doing it with this time the uh, USB memory stick version. Still won't work. And all this time it'll actually load into it, you try to boot it up, <clears throat> and it would hang during the boot process and just wouldn't actually load the installer for PFSense. So I go, okay, well, let's just scrap virtual media entirely, grabbed a USB stick, loaded it all onto, loaded the USB version out of that, plugged it into the back. Now we're working. It's booting. It's getting into the installer. You get into the, the first part the first part of the installer, you know, select your multi-user. It gets going, and then it hangs again. <laughs> it's like, really? Really? Um, at this point, it's right after, if you're watching what's going by on the screen, it gets to the point where it's actually checking your drives, and it goes, okay, you've got, you know, you've got your USB drive here, you, we've seen your hard drive here, and then it's supposed to start loading up, and then you get to your beginning of the actual install process. Uh, yeah, it didn't work. It would hang up right at that spot, and it would just sit there, and I just thought, well, maybe it's just being slow for some reason, and I let it sit for a good hour, came back and checked on it still sitting there okay shut everything down Whip. took the uh, USB stick back to my other computer plug it in wiped it downloaded another copy of the uh, installer from yet another mirror just trying to eliminate potential variables here 
at this point, I, you know, I didn't have any clue what's going on. Uh, once I put put the new copy onto the flash drive, plug it in. This time we're booting. We finally get everything installed. Um, it's at this point where I notice that we're having issues with the actual uh, NIC card here. Like, well, what the heck's going on here? It's basically getting some really un instability. It's, it's not wanting to function properly. It's it's shutting off, so to speak. Well, I get to I pull the card out and I'm looking at it. I'm just kind of looking for any obvious things like you know broken broken off service components, things like that. And I actually hold it up to the light and I look down inside of here, and it's fixed now. But what I could see when I held it held it up to my light here was that the heat sink oh focus come on focus, there we go um that it's not actually making contact with the chips underneath so they're not getting cooled so essentially they're overheating and not working so that's when we bust out the soldering iron uh we have i had to this uh, heat sink's actually soldered on so i had to desolder it remove it uh, grab some thermal paste, not a big deal, you know, put the thermal paste on it after cleaning everything up, because there, there was thermal paste on here, it was partially making contact with one of the two chips on here, the other chip came out completely clean, no thermal paste had ever even transferred onto it, so it was in, it was built that way, and this is, according to some of the, the production numbers on some of these chips on here, it looks like this card was built back in 2007-ish, so I don't know how this thing managed to to exist for so long and not get thrown away at some point or sent back to Intel but you know whatever so now it's working now it's fixed um, I've actually gotten this thing up I've done some testing on it I haven't fully deployed it yet uh, that'll be going on probably or after I get done making this video um, and we'll get this thing fully up and running fully tested I mean so far it seems to be working okay which is good you know that's it's better better than it was um, it's just a lot of stupid little things that just kept cropping up one right after the other and you know, it's, it's just one of those things that happens every once in a while when you do builds you know you just you get those computers that just want to fight you tooth and nail from start to finish and this is one of them <laughs> simple little router build that it should have been done in you know you know 20 30 minutes you know as far as putting it together and everything and it ended up taking a few weeks between mailing parts back and forth and you know just regular life kind of getting in the way not allowing me to have time to work on it things like that but we're finally there we're finally working uh so we'll get this thing off fully fully fired up <clears throat> it's gonna have a it's new home somewhere over here I'm not sure where yet um the wrt 1900 is going to stay up there but it's going to just be wi-fi only it's just going to function as an ap and we'll see where it goes from there. Um, hopefully things go smooth from here. I don't foresee any more issues. Knock on wood. Crest wood. Particle board. <laughs> Alright. So, yeah. I mean, you know, if you guys got any questions or anything. Or, you know, want to give me some crap. Because, you know, things went bad. Or maybe maybe you guys know something that I don't. That would uh, maybe save me some of this heartache. Um... I've built many, many, many machines over the last you know, 20 years or so, and as far as I can tell, this was all just, you know, just bad luck for the most part, minus the one mistake I made. Um, so, yeah, you know, let me know what you guys think. Have a good one, and uh, enjoy yourselves.